Hi everybody, let's get into the second part of key issue two with the regions. Uh, I wanted to make this a separate video. Uh, there were three, if you remember correctly, formal, functional, and vernacular. Let's start with formal. Uh, this is probably the easiest of the three because it's just where everyone shares one common characteristic. Might be what kind of food they grow, like in Iowa, everyone's an Iowa farmer. Uh, everyone grows wheat in Montana. Everyone in New England has a unique accent or dialect. Uh, everyone in Alabama votes Republican. So it's a common characteristic. Uh, remember, it's not going to be 100% pure, uh, but they all share that common thing. Uh, functional is the one that gave you guys a little bit more trouble uh, first quarter. Uh, sometimes the AP calls it nodal region. Uh, that's because you start from a central or focal point and everything spreads out from there. Uh, the best example is Walmart or a TV station. The map you're looking at is a TV station map. Uh, and so obviously the TV stations are in Salt Lake. That's the node or the focal point. And then everything spreads out from there. Uh, Walmart, uh, you know, the shopping area for our particular Walmart in Park City is the node. And the people that go to that Walmart are within that functional region. Obviously, this is where distance decay plays a role. Obviously, the further you get away from that Walmart, the less likely you are to use that Walmart, correct? You might be getting closer and closer to Heber. So now that becomes your functional region is the Walmart down in Heber, and you'll go there instead. Uh, vernacular region is your perception. Uh, it's what you believe a region to be. So my definition of the South may be different than your definition of the South. I think of the Confederate States during the Civil War. You may think it's people who belong to right-to-work states, using key terms, uh, or people that have, don't graduate from high school, um, people who grow cotton. And so that's why there's so many different lines on the map, because your perception or your mental map of what the South is is gonna be different than mine. Uh, but it's, it's, it's what you believe is part of the existence of that particular place. Yeah, but just saying, yeah, everyone in the South, none of them can graduate high school. Well, that's your perception. That's your vernacular region of the South. Uh, obviously, all of these regions are gonna have some sort of connection. Hopefully you remember what hearth means. Uh, that's where something begins. Uh, this is the key part of this chapter, though, as well, the diffusion, relocation diffusion, obviously, is where you pick up and leave and go somewhere else and drop off your idea or concept somewhere new. Uh, the best example of that is religion. Uh, obviously, Christianity started uh, in the Middle East in Israel uh, in Jerusalem and Bethlehem and moved to Europe and then moved here with uh, the colonies. Expansion diffusion is broken down into three parts. Uh, hierarchical, contagious, and stimulus. Hierarchical, remember, is from the top down. That's where the boss tells you what to do and everybody else does it. The king tells you what to do and everybody else does it. Uh, contagious diffusion is pretty obvious. Uh, the spread of a disease, how uh, relevant that is right now. Uh, that spreads very fast. That's what all these expansion diffusions are. Uh, stimulus diffusion is one that does not take off necessarily. It's diffused in a large manner, but then doesn't take off because no one likes it. Uh, remember the example I gave you in class was the headphone jack uh, for your iPhone that no one likes because you got to buy an adapter for it. Uh, and so it, it, it refuses to take off. Uh, the irony is the new Apple iPhones coming out next year will not have a headphone jack at all which is forcing you to now buy Bluetooth headphones, correct? But again, it's something that doesn't really take off. Uh, then we added a word, uh, reverse hierarchical diffusion. Uh, that's not from the king telling you what to do. That starts at someplace small and then spreads to the big areas later. Uh, an example of that is Walmart. Walmart starts in a small town. It's a five and dime store in Arkansas. Uh, and then obviously spreads like wildfire throughout the entire country. Uh, as we talked about first quarter as well, this creates the uniform landscape. Uh, that's where everything looks the same. Remember our discussion, we talked about getting off of I-80. And what do you see? McDonald's, Best Western, yada, yada, yada. Get off 300 miles down the road, get off an exit. What do you see? McDonald's, Holiday Inn, Best Western. You see the exact same things over again. 
And so unfortunately, that is going to be our uniform landscape. Uh, the last key issue was pretty much sustainability. I think we remember all these pretty well. Non-renewable is a fossil fuel, oil, natural gas. Renewable is the sun, the wind, so forth. Sustainability is when we try to sustain those for future generations. So we should probably be using more renewable and less non-renewable. Obviously, we deplete all the non-renewables. We love to burn stuff in this country. Uh, and then obviously, one of the other problems we create with that is we destroy some of the renewables uh, with all the pollution that we're using, particularly water and the air. Uh, so we gotta be careful with that. Uh, and lastly, cultural ecology, environmental determinism. A lot of people get these mixed up a little bit. Uh, that's where the physical environment caused social development. Uh, Europe became developed because they had a temperate climate. They weren't always fighting the weather. Uh, so they had longer periods of time to uh, work on farming and agriculture and eventually industry. <coughs> uh, possibilism is a physical environment may limit some of the human actions, but people can adjust to their environment. So obviously, what is possible to grow in the climate of Park City? Well, we're too high of an elevation, so we can only grow, if any, certain ty types of crops. Uh, but as, as you move closer into more temperate climates, obviously what's going to be possible to grow in those areas is going to change because the climate changes. Uh, and so again, environmental determinism is what caused social development and possible is what may limit some of your actions because of the climate you typically live in. Okay, the last part of these reviews, as you'll see on Canvas, are review questions. Uh, if we were in class, it's too bad because I was going to make, have some fun with this. We we're going to do some brackets since the basketball tournament got delayed. Uh, anyway, so it would start off pretty easy with some true-false questions. Parallels converge at the North and South Pole. That is four, false, of course. Uh, parallels uh, do not converge at the North and South Pole. That's meridians. Uh, the numbering system used to indicate the location of meridians is called latitude. Well, I just gave you the answer to that one. Uh, it is not. For each 15 degree change in longitude, time changes by one hour. You should know that one because I told you a little while ago. It is true. So I'm not going to go through all of these. Obviously, you can do these on your own as practice. Uh, they're, they start off with true false. They move into multiple choice. Uh, and then at the very end, I highly recommend using them uh, because they could become questions from an actual AP test. Uh, from, I don't know, five years ago, 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. Uh, so you've got a little variety of questions, and every review will have those types of questions at the very end. So feel free to knock yourselves out. Thanks, and we'll talk again during Chapter 2.